So here's a fun fact. If you ask a tour player to hit a desired yardage, let's say it's 150 yards, the tour player on average will hit short of the target 65% of the time. Who is the best of all time? You could guess it. Tiger Woods. 49% long and 51% short. So knowing your yardages is really, really important. And if we know our yardages, that's going to help you score better and hit more stock shots with more confidence. So let's talk about just how to know your yardages. So the big question is this. How do passionate golfers like you and I develop a stock shot day in and day out? A stock shot that's as reliable as the sun coming up in the morning. That's the question, and this podcast is the answer. Welcome to Stock Shot Secrets. So knowing your yardages, if you were really to kind of like think about it, like your yardages are your shot dispersion. So your shot dispersion, you could either, if you had to choose one of two ways, which one would you rather have? Like think of it like an oval. You could have an oval that's very north and south driven, or you could have an oval that's very east to west driven. Now, the question is, is which oval would you like? Would you like to hit it very straight, but say like your seven iron could go 165, but then it can also go 140 yards? Or would you rather have a seven iron with a with a with an oval that's maybe a little bit more horizontal, where your six your seven iron could go 165 and maybe it goes 158, right? So the truth is, is that if you can have your shot dispersion be more east to west rather than north to south, you're going to score way way better. Now the truth is, kind of what we were talking about in the intro is that if you look for a tour player, right, and you ask. You, you ask the top 125 players in the world, hey, I want you to hit a shot that's 180 yards long. 65% of those shots will be short of the flag, meaning even tour players need to know their yardages better. And that is why, like, you see constantly in Golf Digest and these magazines and Instagram and YouTubes and everything else, like, hey, just aim for the back of the green. And, like, if you do that, you'll play better, which is actually, like, pretty good advice. There's a lot of bad advice out there, but this one's actually pretty good advice. And the reason is because most amateurs don't hit their club the desired yardage, right? They kind of, you go, how far do you hit your seven? And they're like, 100, 170 yards. And then I'm like... Oh, yeah, when did you do that? They're like, 1976. I hit this one shot downwind, and it went 170 yards. I'm like, yeah, that's not how far you hit a 7 iron man, right? Like, the way we need to know is we need to know what are we going to do 80% of the time. Like, what is the average 7 iron? So when we can start to understand our yardages, it's going to really dramatically help our scoring, right? So the truth is, is that when we're doing this, how do we get these yardages of where we actually know how far we're hitting the ball? And that's something that, quite frankly, for us, you know, roomies that are listening to this, charting yardages is probably not something you're doing enough. You're sitting on the range and you're like, okay, like the ball's curving correctly, like stock shot, stock shot, stock shot, stock shot. But you're not understanding that like one ball's going 160 and one ball's going 140. So the first thing I want you to do is when you go out onto the range, I want you to actually take out your range finder and try to shoot some targets on the range that you can see where the ball lands. So this might be like, you know, into the bank of a hill. It might be into the bank of like a bunker. It might be the bunker, right? Like if you have a bunker on your range or somewhere where you can actually calculate how far this ball is is flying, right? Because my guess is you probably don't have one of those fancy smancy track man sitting behind you capturing your golf ball how far it goes but we need to know how far our ball was actually carrying now when we do this now we need to start hitting these balls repetitively at that target to the point where if you're hitting 10 shots you really need to know what and you're really maybe even you're charting and you're writing it on your phone or a piece of paper or a scorecard or something and you're charting how far did this eight iron go and you're like okay my eight iron it went 164 and then 166 and then 161 and then 158 and then 162 and 152 and 145 and all those things now when you get done with those 10 shots i want you to delete kind of basically erase the 20 percent of the bad shots that you hit those 20% shots that you hit, you just can't account for, right? Like, we're human beings. We're going to make bad swings, and that's okay. But we need to make sure that we're, we are we understand what the 80 percentile of the shots that were hit, where those go. So while if I was doing that, I might have hit one 8-iron that was 166, the average 8-iron that I'm actually hitting, if I calculate all those 8 shots, might be 161. And that allows me to now know what, let's say, my 8-iron is now. 
when you go about building your golf bag, right? And I'll talk about how you can do this on the course. But when you go about building your golf bag, your golf bag, if you swing a driver at about, let's say, 105 miles an hour, right? Your golf bag, your irons, based upon the loft that is on the clubs, your irons are going to have about a 12-yard gap between every club. So if I know that and I've done my 8-iron and I do my 7-iron and 6-iron, you can kind of make some hypothesis of how far these balls are going which every, with every single club. Hey guys, I hope you are enjoying this episode of the Stock Shot Secrets Podcast. If you are enjoying it, be sure to like this episode. Be sure to subscribe so you can always see when they are coming out. And most importantly, if you would be so kind to be able to share this podcast with other passionate golfers who are trying to get better and build stock shots because it grows through you sharing it. Thank you so much for tuning in. And now back to Stock Shot Secrets. So what can happen as as you're playing golf, because like right now when I'm filming this in Ohio, it's really hot. It's like 92 degrees outside, right? So when I am playing every 10 degrees above 70 degrees, the ball should fly about three to four yards long, three to four yards longer. So the ball is going to fly a lot different in Columbus in June and July than it's going to in March and October. And that's based upon the air and how hot it is and the compression of the ball. So my yardages are like constantly adjusting. But what's not adjusting is that 12-yard differential. So if I'm going on the first hole and I have an 8-iron, right, and I'm, I'm setting in my fair, I hit, hit a drive down the fairway, I'm going through my think box, so I go, hey, how's my line? I go, pretty good, I'm in the fairway. Okay, where do I want to land it? Well, I shoot the pin and I go, it's 168. Um, and then I, I'm like, where do I want to land? I want to hit it 164. And then I go, okay, what's the wind? And I'm like, yeah, it's a little bit downwind. Um, you know, let's say it's downwind five miles an hour. So that's going to play 161. And then I go, what club is that? And I go, that's an eight iron. And I set up and I hit an eight iron. I'm like, hey, that wasn't like a nuked eight iron, but it was just a very generic home ho-hum stock shot eight iron that flies 161 yards and then releases to, let's say, 165. Now what I've done is now that I've hit that one 8-iron on the first hole, I can now calculate the rest of my bag based upon that one shot because now I know that I'm hitting a 9-iron, probably 149, a pitching wedge, 137. I'm hitting a 6 or a 7-iron, 173, a 6-iron, 185, a 5-iron, 197, and a 4-iron, 209. So by doing this, I now know all the car, all the yardages that I have in my bag for all clubs based upon that one shot. And the also the one shot that a lot of people don't realize is that one shot that I hit, I also can now realize how far the ball is releasing on the green because the ball is going to release on the green different from one course to another course, right? So on this course, I hit it 161, it went 165. Well, at St. Andrews, that ball could land 161 and go 180. And then at Pebble Beach, that ball could land at 161 and go 161. So how the firmness of the greens and what the ball is doing when it's reacting is really, really important, which is why it's more important for us to understand our carry numbers than our total numbers. Our total numbers are going to change based upon the golf course we're playing. Those those are going to change, right? But what isn't going to change is the carry numbers day to day, right? So, But they will, they will change based upon the weather that we're playing. Like in Arizona, when I would play in Arizona, when I was living out there playing um, professional golf, a lot of times you'll have the mornings, it'll be like 65 degrees. And then in the afternoons, it's like 99 degrees, right? My dad and my parents are in Arizona right now. They're like, it's 105. It's so hot out here. And it is hot. I actually like 105 degrees. But the point being is that when the when the weather is changing 40 degrees in the midst of a round of golf, when I tee off at 8 a.m. and I get done at 1230, right? Right. That is a big, big difference in my yardages. And my yardages are almost adjusting through the round based upon the weather that I'm playing in. And that's the same kind of in Columbus, right? Like right now, if I look at my watch, it's 66 degrees with a high of 88, right? So if I tee off right now, the ball is going to be flying different right now if I were to be teeing off than if I was playing than than it is on like hole 15, 16, 17. So you're kind of constantly monitoring what those yardages are, which is why in your yardage book or on your score sheet or like a pin sheet, if I was having that shot, I would have wrote 167, like I would have wrote 168 was the pin, right? And then I would have said downwind and I would have drawn like a little arrow right on it. And I would have said, okay, downwind five miles an hour. And I would have said equals eight iron 161. So that way I know that at that moment I was hitting my eight iron 161. 
So the long story short is when you're going to the range, shoot places on the range where you can see the ball land. If you don't have a range that you want to do that, you know, obviously you guys can come into the golf room if you're in Columbus, Ohio, or find a track man near you to where you can calculate your yardages. I used to literally sneak in, not really sneak in, but I used to go into a place in Arizona that had a track man. This is back in like 2009 because track man, like no one had them. And I would go in there and I'd be like, yeah, I'm just going to de- demo some clubs really quick. And I would demo my club. And I would say, okay, I'm going to hit my 8-iron. i go, oh, my 8-iron went 161. And I knew this secret of, like, they're 12 yards apart. So I was like, okay, if I'm 161, then I would check a 7-iron. I'm like, okay, perfect. That's, like, 173. And then I hit a 9-iron. and was like, okay, that's 149. And now I knew what my yardages were based upon a couple of those, like, decent average shots that I was hitting, right, like normal tempo. So once you can get those yardages, like basically one club, provided that your clubs are lofted and lined correctly, now you know the rest of your bag because your rest of your bag is probably somewhere in that like 12-yard gap. You probably need to know what your gapping is, um, which is kind of you can do that with your the pro or you can do it at the golf room. We do those at the golf room um, gapping services. But um, that way now you know what every club is, which is really, really important. I mean – we would all agree that Tiger Woods is probably maybe the greatest ball striker ever, one of the best players ever, if not the best. And the fact that he was 51% short and 49% long, and the average tour player is 65% short, that should tell us something. And that should tell us that knowing your yardages is really, really important. So don't overlook this this skill set when you're trying to lower your scores and build stock shots in your game because it is crucial, crucial to playing your best. Hey guys, thank you so much for listening to the latest episode of Stock Shot Secrets. Now, as a listener of Stock Shot Secrets, I want to make sure that you have the opportunity to get better. So, if you were to go to StockShotClub.com, I'm going to give you seven days free access where you can send us your video and we will give you personalized individual attention as to what you need to do so that you can start building stock shots. So, just go to StockShotClub.com. And register there. We'll give you seven days free where you can try it. And then if we like it, you can stay inside the Stock Shot Club where we can become your coach and walk with you for your entire journey. Thank you so much. And be sure to go visit StockShotClub.com.